Right, Christmas is over. Time to look forward to the new year. Hi, uh, yeah, welcome back to Holt Warren 009. I'm Mark, and as I say, Christmas is gone. Hope you had a good one. Hope you had some nice railway related presents. I didn't this year. Um, we've had a lot of expenditure on the house. We kept budget a bit lower this year. So she didn't know what she wanted. I had a few ideas like a nice little gift voucher from the local modern railway shop would have been good. But what we decided to do is in the new year, first week or so of new year, we're going out and having a right posh meal somewhere nice. So um, that will be our Christmas present to each other. Last year, about this time, I had been watching Charlie at um, Chadwick Model Railway and he'd come up with an idea that he was going to stop doing bits and pieces and that he was going to get his track down and then he was going to get onto his scenic um, scenic detailing of the railway. I thought that's a good idea. Also he set himself a kind of schedule with some ideas of dates of when he wanted to hit the different parts of the railway. And as I say, I thought that was a good idea. So I decided that I was going to build the fiddle yard, get the track on it, get it wired up, get it tested, get a train running, and that would be by the end of March. Then I'd move on to the Helix, give myself a four or five weeks to do that. So by the end of April, have the fiddle yard, uh, sorry, the Helix built, the track laid, all wired, tested, and trains running on it. Not bad. Then it was to move on to the scenic boards. Now, by the end of May, I wanted one of the two boards done. Again, all tracked out, all wired, all tested. Then move on to the second one so that I had all that done by kind of middle of July time. Um, then I wanted to get all the rest of the track sorted out. There's some odd bits around that need doing. There's some wire need tidying up. Then get me head round eye trains so that I would have trains running around the whole circuit by... August. No, 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 no. Didn't happen, did it? So, where did we get to? Well, we got the baseboard for the fiddle yard built. We got it tested for operational reliability. That is that all the isolation points were in place, the track was laid properly, the trains would run round it. So that was all done. But that took a bit later. That was well into April time. Then I moved on to the Helix. As you know from my previous video, that's where I hit huge problems. I just um, bowed out for about three months. But the Helix is now built. I've got trains running around that, so that's good. I had to do some alterations. I had to lift the board that, for the fiddle yard up a couple of um, inches or so to uh, make the Helix a bit easier to do. And then I had to swap. I had um, a board with the electronics on and to raise the a fiddle yard up I had to drop the board with all the um, DCC components on. So that's basically where we are now. So what we've got to start doing now is really looking to see where we move this forward into the new year. I'm not going to set dates, there's too much pressure on me. Um, I'm not going to reach those targets anyway. Things can happen and change and then I just don't want that pressure. I have, however, drawn up a schedule um, which I think is obtainable over the course of the year. So I'll just give you a quick run through on that. Right, so the plan is, is the first job um, in the next week or so is to get the cork laid on this line here, which is where the station's going to be. Also the cork laid on here. Um, what I, it's damp down here in the shed so what I'm probably going to do is try and get it as warm down here as I can and get this dried out. It does feel a little bit damp. I'm not going to use PVA to put down the cork. I'm going to use a spray um, Evo stick on it so a contact adhesive. So I put it down on the spray on the board, put it on the back of the cork and then push it down. I'm hoping 
that that will solve the problem. On the fiddle yard just down here, some of the cork has started to raise. The damp's got into the PVA glue, although it was exterior wood glue, um, and it's still lifted and bubbled in places. So I'm hoping the Evo stick will um, solve that problem. So once we've got the cork down, we're then looking at putting the track in, and as I say, we have then got to wire it and test it. Um, when we're putting the track down, I also want to put the magnets in for the uncoupling. I've got to put the point motors in. This ball's easy, it's just flip up and put the wiring and the point motors on the bottom. This end here, I have just put this one in, this piece of board in with a couple of screws at the moment holding it in place. But there's a point to, two points to go here, so I need to get the point motors in there then secure that down. Once the point motors are in, I am then going to sort out a um, one of these pull-out trays I've got under here, these white boards, and I need one, and this is one I'm going to take you very slowly, and you can see the mess of the railway at the moment. I need one of those boards here because this is going to be a reversing loop. There's a point there, at least one point, there might be two or three points there, depending on space and what I can get in there. But I need a board to pull out so I can put the digi keys um, devices on there to help operate those. Once the tray's done, I then really need to tidy the shed up. I just pointed out it's a mess. This area here has got the final part bit of track work to be done on it. I've now finished the majority of the heavy duty woodwork, so I don't need bits of wood around anymore, like up the top here. I don't need my templates in the way, and I can just have a general tidy up. So uh, that's the next stage then, and then give myself some space here. I want to reorganize all underneath the board as well. There's just bits and pieces all over the place. There's stuff, I, I've been here 11 years now, and there's stuff down there I don't need. So that's going to get cleared out. Um, I'm also then going to look at installing the different power supplies. Over this end I've got another pull-out tray. This is where my computer is going to go with eye trains. I've already got the screens on the wall here, but I need a, um, a decent power supply in here with plugs that are labelled and I make sure I've got enough plugs. Um, I've got a power a ring main in here anyway and the power runs down to the house and it's uh, just the other side of this wall here is the actual tool shed and that's got a little fuse box in there so we're okay up to there but I just want to make sure this is nice and safe and then I've got proper plugs around that I can get to and they're not going to get in the way or kicked or anything. Once I've done all that and once it's all tidied up underneath here I have put dropper wires down underneath here but in my inexperience when I did it I have just used various colours so I want to change those to red and black so it matches the rest of the layout. Now talking about that, we mo a lot of people use uh, black to the back, red to the front, okay, which is fine. I started that on the fiddle yard down here, I've got black to the back, red to the front. What I wasn't thinking though is when you actually come up and then go <laughs> round on a curve, the back becomes the front. So although the fiddle yard is black to the back, the top part of the layout is red to the rear, if you like. Right, once that's done, the dropper wire's down, I've got to get all the wiring into the various DigiKeys components. We've got one tray here, I'm not sure if I can pull it out, I think the stool's going to be, no, we've got it here. So we've got one tray here with the components on, and as I say, we're going to have another one just behind me for the end of the branch line. So all the wiring will get done on there, then I can test everything as far as I can. Um, once the wiring's in, I know everything's fine and the points work and the track's working, I'm then going to look at the back scenes. Um, I think I want to get the back scenes in right the way round the layout and then I can build the scenery up to the back scene rather than try and build the uh, landforms and then try and slot the back scenes in the back of it. Now over this side, you might have noticed that once upon a time in the early videos there was a back scene running all the way down there. Again, this was put on with wallpaper paste and new uh, PVA glue. And over time it has, and you might still see over there, it's just bubbled up and the things start peeling off. So I've ripped that off. The back scenes I'm going to put on now, I've got two ideas. One, I might use self-adhesive ones. The other thing is, last Christmas, the wife bought me four art lessons um, at a local studio. 
and I might have a go at painting my own back scene. Um, I've got the river down hidden underneath all this rubbish and I want the river to actually go off and then go into the back scene and I've only found one printed back scene with a river that connects through like that and that was from Pico. I might give it a go. We covered clouds and we covered trees and distance and perspective and stuff. Um, it's just getting my confidence together to see if I can do that. Yeah, so once the back scene's in place, as I say, then I'll work on the landforms at both in this area. So I've got to go all here because, as I said in the previous one, I want a hill form there. I might have a pond in the middle. This has got to go up into a little hill at the back here because I want the branch line to Holton St Barnabas to actually go, rise up. So when you look through the buildings here, you can just see it going up and through the back of the buildings. And then I've got this area to do here. There's a reversing loop in here, but I've got to get the landform in to hide some of it so it looks like the train goes off that direction and then comes back on a separate line in from a different angle here. So I've got to do the landforms there as well. Then I've got to paint all that, uh, do the basic ground cover. And then once that's in place, I want to extend. You can see down here that I've got some of the face you're in and I obviously want to bring that now down the front of this one and just finish off the corner there so that's really the schedule it's not a huge amount of work and um, I just want to get it done really but without putting myself under any pressure right it's getting a bit nippy down here I'll tell you that um, so that's where we are and that's what we plan to do in the future now keep myself on track, the points for my schedule I've already typed up and printed up. That will be going up on the wall in a moment, um, so I can keep on track of what I'm doing. I am looking forward to doing this bit, I've found it very hard work doing that helix and the fiddle yard. Most of that was because I hadn't appreciated how accurate you've got to be with your track work. Using N-Gage and 009, the wheels are so tiny on the rolling stock, you just need a slightest blimp, slightest off kilter with your track or gaps in the track, and that just catches the wheels and it throws the rolling stock off. So um, that's one thing I've learned. Wiring as well, putting the points in. I've tried to do this so it's going to be as easy as possible uh, with the, the next stage of the project. Um, for doing the track up here, I did use cardboard um, templates, so I drew it out first, cut it out, tried to see if it fitted, got the angles right. I'm going to use a similar method when I come to do the road. I want the village up here with the road coming round. Uh, I was talking about bridges. I might get a bridge in there, but these level crossings and stuff, I haven't got the room. We dream of how much and what we want to put on our model railways. And then when it comes to actually in practice to put it in place, it's you just haven't got the room. Um, you can't comp It's so compressed down that you just haven't got the room to put the you know, bridge over that, bridge under that, and it just doesn't work. Right, so I know where I'm going with the future. There's a couple of other projects I want to do. Um, I want to tidy this place up. I've got some new signs for to go up, up here as well. I've been doing some tidying up upstairs. Um, my grandfather was in a reserved occupation. Both grandfathers were in reserved occupation during the war, but one of them, he did his bit as well by being an air raid warden, and that's the sign from his house. So that's going up. I've got the old number plate from his uh, motorcycle to go up as well. Just helps decorate it up. Man cave, I think they call it, isn't it? But it just makes it a bit more you, a bit more personal. Um, I've got some other signs to go up as well that uh, I've had made. So yeah, just make it a nice cosy place. One of the other projects I want to do is I've got to get my head round eye trains, as I said earlier, and the videos I've been watching. And again, I apologise, but I just can't. I'm terrible with names, and it's gone out of my head. I should have made a note of it. But the the videos um, I've been watching on it, the chap there has actually built uh, a kind of a small. Um, practice layout if you like and just develops that so you learn as you build and then what I learn from that I'll transfer on here. Hopefully by the end of the year I'll get my head around eye trains if not I'm not going to put myself under the pressure but I need to do that. Uh, a friend of mine died a couple of years ago as well um, his name is Steve Williams. Um, at school we called him Willem so Willem 
introduced me to railways in a big way. His dad worked for British Railways, so he knew a fair bit. And he took me down to London and we were in our early teens. You wouldn't do that with a teenager these days. You wouldn't let them loose in London. But we went to, I think it was called Collector's Corner, which used to be around the corner from Euston Station, run by British Railways, days before eBay. And they sold up all their surplus stuff at a decent price. Then eBay came along and the other sites. And it all costs a fortune now. Um, the other thing that Willem did though was introduce me into uh, warships and westerns, Hymex, Peaks, um, Brush Type 2s, Brush Type 4s and what I've done recently is, well before I retired I thought money might be a bit tight so I start collecting some um, analogue models of those trains and I just want to do a little simple layout and I'm going to call it Willem Road and it'd be like a depot from a heritage diesel railway so I will just have those hopefully on the shelf up here just running backwards and forwards you know, just to uh, another little bit to keep me occupied down here anyway enough waffling I always end up waffling don't I thank you for watching happy new year to you and I uh, hope you uh, tune in in the next couple of videos that are coming up but bye for now if you've enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe to support the channel and help it grow. Thank you.